These security cameras are about to become my eyes at Blackthorn Tattoo, my partner Ruby's new tattoo studio. Before they can keep watch over the space, I need to come up with a way to mount them. You see, I want a clean setup, so I'm using some electrical boxes that I have, but I don't have good mounting options just off the shelf to mount these cameras to those boxes. So of course, enter 3D printing, because when in doubt, print your way out. In this video, I'm gonna be designing my mounting solutions for the cameras that I'm gonna be installing in the boxes that I'm working with, as well as getting them 3D printed and then installed in the space with probably at least one 3D printed tool to make that job easier. Before we get to designing parts, let's talk about the hardware we're designing around, the cameras we're gonna be using and the mounting boxes we need to adapt to. For cameras, we're gonna be using a pair of Ubiquiti Unify Protect units. I personally really like this system, not because they paid me to say that, they didn't, but because it's genuinely a simple system to use. It doesn't have any licensing fees, no monthly cloud access fee just so I can view my own cameras. Really, Ubiquiti is not the sponsor of this video. I just genuinely wanted you to understand why I like it and why I wanna use their setup. They did provide it for this project, but I asked them to because it's what I want to use. For inside, we're gonna use a G5 Flex camera. This is a really compact one that'll fit nicely and not be obtrusive in the space. This connects via PoE, which should hook up nicely to that 3D printed server rack that I built in a previous video for the studio. And it has a microphone, so we'll have audio inside the space as well. For outside of the studio, we're gonna be using a G5 Ultra turret. It has an IP66 weather rating, which will be great for the rainy Portland weather. And it has a 30 meter IR range on it. So the night vision, getting good visibility after hours should be really good on this one. Then outside for the Ultra turret, we're gonna be using a Bell outdoor box that is metal and intended for the elements because once again, Portland weather. Now that we're on the same page about what we're mounting and where it's going, we can dive into CAD and start designing up our 3D printable mount. But if you wanna improve your CAD design skills, you should check out this video's sponsor, Skillshare. If you've been wanting to get into 3D modeling or you're like me and just always looking to pick up new tricks, Skillshare is honestly a fantastic place to get started. They have thousands of creative classes for makers, designers, and DIY nerds like us. When looking for a suggestion for you folks, I found the Autodesk Fusion 360, the year 2025 edition, Complete Beginner's Guide by Chris Richardson. It's a very in-depth class that starts from absolutely zero and builds up to full 3D assemblies and pro level features. Even if you've dabbled in CAD before, I guarantee you'll pick up something new, especially if you're using Fusion for 3D printing. But Skillshare is not just CAD. They've got plenty of classes on video editing, productivity, illustration, and business marketing things, which is great if you're trying to build a side hustle off of your maker work. Skillshare is an online learning platform built for creatives. It works around your schedule. Lessons are quick, stackable, and you can learn at your own pace, whether that's on your lunch break or a deep dive of 3D modeling in the middle of the night. So if you're just looking to sharpen up your skills or get that 3D design idea that's been kicking around in your head for months into reality, consider checking out the link in the description to Skillshare. The first 500 folks who follow my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So get started today. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's take some of that newfound 3D design knowledge and apply it to Fusion so we can mount up some cameras. I said this many times in previous videos, but whenever I'm working on real world objects, things that have set dimensions, the first thing I do is not break out calipers and start measuring them. It's actually just to see if I can quickly find a 3D model that already exists of these objects to work off of. In this particular project, the only file I was able to find was one for this Bell outdoor box, and actually I already had it, so I'm not 100% where I got it from. My go-to sources trying to find 3D models are grabcad.com, McMaster Cars website, they actually have 3D models for a lot of the products they sell, which is probably where I got this one. And then I would default to Google searching after that if those two sources don't come through. Oh, and if you do find a 3D model, check your measurements against your real world object. Sometimes you'll find an older version of a part that's been updated. You'll find a larger version that looks identical, but it's not the same dimensions or the 3D model somebody made just might not be any good. Also, one last really important note before we dive into the design work, do pay attention to the licenses on those files that you are using because they will often be non-commercial licenses. So you may not be able to sell a product you design off of those or including those. 
it's definitely something to consider. Like my Mod 10 mini server rack, I designed that from scratch based off of just measuring things and open standard measurements that were available on the market. I did not use anybody else's 3D models in the construction of that so that I would completely avoid the concept of license overlap and I could sell my design. So our first design is gonna be around the 3D model we already have, the outdoor electrical box, which I'm gonna mount the turret ultra onto. As I didn't find a 3D model for either of the cameras, I'm gonna have to measure off of each one. I measured the whole spacing on this mounting flange for the G5 turret ultra, and I actually found that it matches to the inner hole spacing on this electrical box, almost like they planned for this. This means to create a mount for this, all I need is a mounting flange that covers the opening of the box and also has those two inner holes in it so that we can just pass right through the mounting flange for the camera, the mounting flange we're gonna to use to cover up this box and then into the box. With my rough shape created, I can select all the various sections that I don't need. So everything except for the very inner hole for the wires pass through and my mounting holes, and then extrude up my mounting plate. In the end, my final design is very simplistic, but exactly what I need it to be. It's just a mounting flange with a couple of holes passed through for the camera to mount both the camera itself and this flange to the box. I did add this big ugly brim on top of it. I hope it doesn't look as ugly in the real world, but my goal there was, this is Portland, Oregon. While the camera is IP66 rated, I trust it to hold up out there. Why subject it to weather if I don't have to? This is gonna be up high on a wall, so this is gonna keep snow, rain, or falling debris off of local trees from hitting the camera. As far as the conduit box is concerned and the G5 flex camera that I need to put onto it, I need to mount it something like this orientation on the ceiling hanging down. So again, a fairly flat flange is gonna work for me, but I wasn't able to find a 3D model of this box. Luckily, it's just a square box. I can measure its outer dimensions and then measure from those outside dimensions to where the outer holes, I think are what I'm gonna use as they're flush with the top surface. I measure to those, lay out my whole pattern, and then I just need a circle in the middle for where this is going to mount and a couple of screw holes. I did have to do a little bit of measuring to get the base shape of the G5 Flex. I didn't get it exactly the way that it is, but I got enough that it'll fit my mounting setup because these screws are not centered on the circle in the body base. So it, I just have to measure kind of an offset as to where they're located. And I will likely do a quick test print to make sure that I got those dimensions right before I go with my final design. This is something that I will do whenever I'm not 100% certain about the dimensions that I'm working with in a final print, whether I need it to be a slip fit, holes to line up, whatever. Running a test print will really help me dial in my design. So in this case, I printed these flanges, which is just the bare minimum amount that I needed to line up the hole spacing with the electrical box and with the camera base. It took me three iterations to finally dial this in. And then I was able to run and get my prints done. Both the ball cap mount for the G5 turret and the much sleeker, more streamlined look that I ended up for the G5. I wanted this to be a kind of clean look. And I'm happy with the way this turned out. With our printed mounts completed in hand and ready to go, we're ready to head to Blackthorn Tattoo and get our cameras installed in place. Now I did say I wanna use a 3D printed tool. This dust collector for drilling has been on printables for a while now and caught my eye. For this particular project, I need to drill a hole through the outer block wall to mount the outside camera. So I'd like to catch as much dust as I can. And I also printed the vacuum adapter to go with this so that I can use that to collect the dust and not just have it catch into the bottle like you could do with this design. Link in the description to this design if you wanna use it. Let's go see how it works and get these mounted up. Come on, Gene, it, it, let me up, please. <laughs> I then promptly arrived at the studio only to realize that the SDS drill bit that I need to go through the concrete block with isn't gonna fit into that 3D printed tool. And even if it was gonna fit through there, I mean, it's a drill bit, I could drill the hole bigger with it. I left my shop vac back at 
my studio. So anyway, it's time to throw in my Isotunes Pro 2.0 hearing protection and punch a hole through this block while making a mess doing so. Of course, the ideal way to have drilled this hole would have been to use a smaller bit and step my way up. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring a smaller bit, which also would have been a longer bit because I bottomed this one all the way out and did not punch all the way through the block wall. So I had to come back the next day with a smaller bit that actually allowed me to use the vacuum tool and punch a hole all the way through the wall and then drill it again from the outside. I'm sorry that the rest of this footage installing this may be from my meta glasses up close POV style because up on a ladder like this was precarious. So I had to be hands free while filming up in this location. So that's what you're getting this perspective from. Once the hole was in place, I was able to install the conduit, a pull elbow and the box and pull some cat six cable in. So it's time to grab our 3D printed and our camera mounting flanges so we can get this all mounted up to that electrical box on the outside of the building. It all stacks together pretty simply, but I did screw up and I had to cut off that brim. It was ugly anyway, so that's fine. You see this electrical box? I mounted it 90 degrees off of where I needed to, so the brim would have blocked the side view of the camera, which is definitely not what I want. I want more visibility. So I was able to get this connected to the Cat6, mounted and then positioned through the app. I was able to view the camera and see where it was seeing so I could adjust its angle. After that minor fiasco, the inside is a total breeze. I have to mount up the junction box to the already mounted conduit on the ceiling in the back corner where I'm just gonna have the widest view of the area and then fish some Cat6 cable through that conduit. That's gonna connect to the back side of this camera, so I have to disconnect it from its flange so I can make the connection, and then I can remount it to its mounting flange. Once that's done, I'm gonna make a connection to the Mod 10 server rack to get it the PoE power it needs so a camera can be tested and plugged in, and then I can mount it to the junction box, and that is it. I've got two security cameras for the space, the one inside the G5 Flex viewing the whole area, and then the outside one which monitors the sidewalk and the front door so that I have a perspective of what's going on in the world outside the studio. And I do believe that's gonna wrap it up for this project. We've got a security camera at the front door so I can see what's happening, who's here, packages, whatever may be occurring right outside of the door. I'd like to get a lower angle for the doorbell camera or something like that, but that'll be later. For right now, Ruby can sit in her office. She can have a perspective of who might be outside the door knocking on it. And that's what I wanted her to have, as well as a security camera inside the space to protect it and monitor client activity or somebody who might try to bust in through a window, we can get some footage of that at least. Let's head back to my office and wrap this up there. 3D printing allowed me to create a couple of basic flanges that are a little more than basic. I could have just gotten some blank plates for those junction boxes and drilled a couple holes into them and mounted up my cameras that way. But I wanted something that was more fit to my purpose. The one inside has a much sleeker look to it. I might paint it to match the ceiling so it blends in a little more, but at the very least, I like the way it looks a lot better than just a flat plate would have. When we're talking about the one on the outside, I screwed up with the clocking on mounting that junction box, so I'm not getting the brim effect that I wanted it to have but I very well may end up changing that camera anyway. You see, while I was filming this video, Ubiquiti dropped the G6 series, which is their new 4K resolution versions of the G5 cameras. So I could upgrade that outside camera eventually from the G5 turret to the G6 turret, get a bump in resolution and fix my mounting flange to have it properly oriented to get that brim that I want for long-term weather care. Overall, this project was me using 3D printing to take my installation to the next level. I hope you folks found this video interesting. If you did, maybe you'll enjoy this video of building my 3D printed mini server rack that I used at Blackthorn Tattoo, or this video that YouTube thinks is best for you. Get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. See you, folks.